Hi folks, today we are going to be working with clay and the clay technique that we're going to use is called a slab. And a slab of clay is like a flat piece of clay, almost like a sheet of newspaper or a sheet of paper. We're also going to be using a pattern. So the pattern that we're going to start with is a heart. And we are eventually going to make a heart that's filled in with different coils that we use scratch attach to stick them all in there. We will also have kind of an edge that holds everything in. So the first part we're gonna to make today is hopefully we will be able to cut out our piece of clay and do our top edge around there. We, some people might get far enough along where they can actually start doing some of the swirls inside, but I'm not counting on that for the first day. The second day, yes, you'll, you'll be that far. So the way that we get started is I will give you your slab of clay, I will give you your pattern, and I will also give you your tools. There will also be something new at your table called slip. Slip is clay and water together. It's very slippery, it's very kind of like slimy, and I'm pretty sure that's why they call it slip. Slip is used almost as a cement. So that's what we're going to use when we scratch attach and we stick things together. We're going to use a little bit of slip so that we can actually stick everything together. So let me move my camera and then we'll get started. So once you get your slab and once you get your heart. We need to figure out the best way to do this. So if I'm looking at this this way and I put it here, well, then I just went over that big hole that's kind of there. If I stick it this way, it fits really good. If I put it in there like this, it probably works even better because then that little small piece of clay that, that is kind of in that area, I avoid that completely. Next, I need to get a tool. So with my tools, you will have your toolbox at your table. There are a lot of different types of tools in here. There's things called fettling knives, which are kind of like a butter knife, but they're very, very weak. So if you press too hard with them, they like to snap. There's Kemper tools, which are wooden tools. There's some ribs that are used for smoothing out some of the clay. There's also some things for texture and some other Kemper tools with texture. There are some Kemper knives and there's some little dowels. So there's a lot of different types of tools in here. And so finding the best one that you need, I would look for something that is a little pointy or use the fettling knife. Now the fettling knife, you have to watch when you use it. It's kind of like a butter knife. There is a little bit of an edge on the one, but it's only going to be sharp if like you're pulling it through your hand. So don't hold it by the bottom like this. You want to hold it by the handle and the nice smooth part is where you kind of put your pointer finger. This way you can turn and cut things out. When we're cutting, we want to make sure the knife is held straight up and down. We don't want it at an angle because then all the clay that we cut will be at an angle. So when I'm cutting, I'm holding down on my pattern and I'm going to cut nice big straight spots. So this is a big straight spot, that's a big straight spot. So I'm going to start here and I'm just going to cut gentle right across. You don't have to cut through the mat. Take whatever clay is left and just slide it over there. Start cleaning up your workspace. Remember, if you want the, the edge, the part that has the edge facing down. So always look, make sure that edge part is facing down and then we cut and we can pull the clay away from there. So you can see, I'm just doing small cuts. I'm not trying to cut this whole thing out at once. I'm not pressing so hard that I'm breaking the knife from the handle. I'm just pressing nice and light. Think of it as using a butter knife or one of the Play-Doh factory knives. We're just pressing nice and light and just moving that clay out of there so that we have some room. Then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put the point of the knife in the point of the heart and I'm going to cut straight out. Once again, I'm going to start out here and I'm going to come right into the middle where I met. That way I can pull that out and it leaves and then I have two small little spots to cut. I have this one, and I have that one. Now, once the knife is done, just put it back in the box so that it doesn't fall on the, on the floor and break. And then we can take this off. Check your edges, see if there's any sharp spots. If there is, that's where you just wanna use your hand and you just smooth it out. You might see one side is a little bit cleaner than the other side. So this side, 
it looks like it was touching some red clay and it has some little scratch marks in there that's not the best side this is actually the best side so that's the side that i'm going to have facing up and i'm just going to smooth and round some little spots now what we need to do is we need to do the edge of our clay so to do the edge of the clay that's where we're going to take the clay that we had left over we're going to roll it into a coil and scratch attach around this edge we're not going to pinch this in we're actually going to attach it in there so that it's a nice height this is when your wooden tools come in handy because you need to do some scratch attaching so you can scratch attach all the way around the edge i like to add that scratch in now that way i don't forget later on so i just go right around i'm just making a couple little marks i'm not worried about going too far in i don't need to this is just going to be a little smaller so some people like to do x's i like to do crisscrosses because that seems to get the most clay in there once i'm done with my tool i can just put it here on the side because you're probably going to need it for the other clay now i'm just going to take some of the clay that i cut off I'm going to make it into a blob and then I'm going to roll it out. Remember, I don't want to flatten it. I don't want it squished. So I want to make sure that I'm using from fingers to my wrist. And I don't want it super big. I don't want it super small too. So we don't want spaghetti where it's this teeny tiny and it's as thick as a straw or even thinner than a straw. So if it's that small, too small maybe about half the size of where I'm at let's see so about the size of my pinky is what I'm after now if your clay breaks not a big deal you can still use it just watch the ends if the clay is starting to really crack though that means stop rolling because you're playing with it too much and we need to be able to attach it so the next thing that I do is I scratch across the top of my clay so I'm going to come through here I'm going to scratch the top of my clay. Once I have that done, that's where the slip comes in handy. Please don't spill this. We want to make sure it does not go around. That's why everyone has their own. Please don't bump someone else's arm or please don't share these. Use yours so that you know exactly where it's at. So the next thing that I do is I go over the spot with my clay slip. So I'm trying to take some clay and I'm trying to fill in that spot. What it does is it makes the clay kind of the same moisture level. And because it's the same moisture level, it wants to join up and it acts almost like a cement. So I'm going to take my clay. Remember, scratch, attach, scratch, attach. Make sure they are touching. And I'm going to go right around the edge of my clay heart. Once I have that in there, I'm going to press it down and I'm going to use my finger to kind of smooth it out. I want to make sure it's not falling off that edge. So my pointer finger is actually holding it in place while my other finger is smoothing it out. So I'm just kind of coming in and smoothing it out. Once I have that done, I can see my next one is going to make that turn. Or I can, I actually, I think I'm going to start up here. So that means I need to also slip this side and slip this side. Now we don't need slip covering everything. We don't want to keep painting it in slip because if, if we have too much water on there, then the clay starts falling apart. So I'm going to overlap those a little bit, smooth them out, and stick them right where I want them. And once they're there, I start using my hand, and I'm going to start smoothing, 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 going around the clay, trying to get that part to stick. If it's not sticking, you know, press a little bit more, or there's other tools inside there. So this type of big popsicle stick, if it's not sticking for you, if you take this and you smooth it out after you have all your edges done, it works out really good. Remember, the inside is going to be covered. So even if it rubs into a little bit, that's okay, because this tool, it acts just like a little butter knife, and it smooths out the clay really nice inside. It also makes sure that it's not going to fall off because you're scratch attaching. So the attaching part, remember in kindergarten we talked about welding or joining two pieces of clay. Well, that's what you're doing here. You're welding the clay together. Now, if I look here, I've kind of run out of coils. So I'm just going to grab another piece of clay. I'm going to start rolling it. And once I get it about as thick as my pinky, I use it as my guide. 
then I can take a look at it and say, okay, is that enough? Oh, that might be more than enough. That's great. So I'm going to pinch a little bit of that off. And then I have to remember, scratch, attach, scratch, attach, scratch, attach. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to scratch, I'm going to slip, and then I am going to put that that way so that the bigger piece blends in. I'm going to come down, make that turn, and you're going to see, watch what I do here. First, I'm going to make sure this is attached before I try to cut anything off because sometimes we cut stuff off and then we realize, oh no, we needed it. So I'm going to start attaching this because sometimes the clay spreads out a little bit. So I'm going to come right through. I'm going to attach, attach, and I'm just going to keep working up. And now I can see where I need to cut it. I can cut it right there, get that out of there, and then we smooth it right together. Now we have our heart all set up. And this is where I hope that you get on day one. I hope that you can get all of this part done. If you can, that's great. That's exactly what we want to do. Now, clean up. If you have little tiny pieces of clay, well, that's where your slip container can get refilled. So since you're using a lot of clay, any little scratchy little pieces of clay or clay that's falling apart, just put into your slip container, just push them down a little bit, and then try to wipe the brush off the best that you can. I understand it's going to be filled with wet, slippery clay. Then please put the lid back on these so that they do not spill. We don't want those falling, and you can just put your brush on top. Tools. Tools need to go back into there. Now, if there's clay chunks stuck on there, that's probably a good idea to put that clay in there too because it's going to be soft and slippery. Once again, watch you don't spill that. Uh, those get all picked up, put away. I will collect the tracers back. And then once I see your tools are picked up, your slip and everything is ready, I will take your clay project off of your spot. I will put it onto a tray so that I can make sure that your name goes on the back. And then you will get a bucket. And in the bucket will be a wet washcloth. Please use that. It will have soap. It will have everything it needs in there. Wash your hands really good with it. You can see it wipes off very easily. Once it's all done, put your washcloth back in sit down quietly and by that time I will be able to pass out paper towels so that you can dry your hands. Once your hands are dry and you are sitting flat quiet in your seat, I will call you to go. Thank you.